Hi, I'm John Paul Martin, the Warning Coordination Meteorologist with NOAA's National Weather Service in Bismarck, encouraging you to attend Skywarn Spotting in your community when the National Weather Service comes out for that, or viewing severe weather safety online, a National Weather Service website, or through videos like this. Uh, National Weather Service website, www.weather.gov. Does this warning team you take the storms around Jamestown? We have uh, six workstations that we can use at the office to do this. So we'll break the, those storms up. You've got those storms, I've got these storms. And then of course, you can, when, you're, when, you're do, when you do that, you tend to lose the big picture because you're so focused on your little area. So we have an event coordinator who's keeping an eye on the big picture. So that when a thunderstorm starts moving into Bowman County, somebody in the office is aware that there's a thunderstorm now moving into Bowman. Tornado, we'll talk a lot about. Violently rotating column of air that extends down from the base of a cloud, a thunderstorm, and is in contact with the ground. That's a picture of a tornado. Roger Hill took the picture. He's a professional storm chaser uh, near Bowdoin in Wells County, July 16, 2011. I believe there was a tornado earlier this day that crossed North Oregon and crossed uh, from Burley County into Sheridan County, I believe earlier uh, that day. Tornadoes are rated based on the damage they do. Tornadoes are rated based on the damage they do. And it's called the Enhanced Fujita Scale, the EF Scale. It changed. It used to be the Fujita Scale, and it changed in 2007. Because engineers said, you're overrating these tornadoes. You're overrating them. In other words, your house is not built as strong as you think it is. It does not take 300 mile an hour wind to destroy your house. That's what they told us. But yet the highest rating was a five, and that was 300 miles an hour. Engineers said, no, it doesn't take that much wind. 200 will completely destroy a house. The other thing they said to us was, you're not taking into account the quality of the construction. Mm -hmm. In other words, before 2007, if the building were gone, we would rate it a five. It didn't matter if two of us could have gotten together, leaned on that building, and it would have fallen over. It didn't matter. We would rate it a five. And that really wasn't fair. So Theodore Fujita was a meteorologist, University of Chicago. He came up with this Fujita scale. Uh, did research in Fargo, North Dakota, during the 1957 tornado that killed 10 people and injured 111 or so. And he came up with this Fujita scale. Uh, but again, engineers told us that uh, we, we really needed to make an adjustment. So we needed to make an They waited until he died. <laughs> he died around 2006 or 7, and they waited, and they consulted with his uh, his uh, uh, wife, you know, his wife, and she said, "Okay, we have to change what," and so uh, so they changed. So really, when we come out and do a damage assessment, if there's a little tornado and it tears up some wheat in a farmer's field, I am not going to drive up. I, I never used to drive up to look at the damage, and for sure now, with the federal budget the way it is, I can't waste $50 in gasoline to drive up and look at some wheat torn out. I just can't do that. And I wouldn't be able to determine anyway, was it an 85 mile an hour wind that tore out that wheat, or a 110 mile an hour wind that tore out the wheat? Okay, so we would rate that tornado a zero on the scale, a zero. Now, if the farm house or the outbuildings are damaged. Yes, now I may come up and do a damage assessment. And especially if anybody is injured or killed, absolutely, I will come out and do a damage assessment. Number one, I want to determine was it wind that did the damage or was it a tornado? And then if it was wind, how high was the wind? If it was a tornado, what is the rating of the tornado? Now the damage that the rating is based on the damage done, zero, one, two, three, four, five. And then once I determine that, the wind speed kind of falls out from there. I am not looking to say <coughs> the wind, I am not looking to say the wind was 125 miles an hour, so that's an EF2. No. I'm saying this was an EF2 tornado, and then the wind speed was whatever it is. Okay? And there are guides we use, for example, a house. 
Some shingles torn off the roof, but maybe the rain gutter torn off, zero. Parts of the roof torn off may take us to a one. Large parts of the roof, maybe a wall, two, so on like that. And again, the quality of construction. Was the wall anchor bolted into the foundation? Or, like sometimes happens, was the building just kind of set down on some cinder blocks? And it really wasn't anchored to the foundation. So all those things we consider now. Again, really the only thing you need to know, weakest tornado is a zero, all the way up to a five, the strongest. Have we had the fives in North Dakota? Have we had any five highest, worst kind of tornadoes? Absolutely we have. Absolutely. These are the most violent tornadoes, the fours and fives. There are very few of them, but they do most of the damage and kill most of the people. Killed in tornadoes are killed by the fours or fives. Seventy percent of all tornado deaths are from the fours and the fives. Large hail. Large hail has a definition, and that's one <coughs> inch in diameter or bigger. The size of a quarter. A quarter is one inch in diameter. And that's by definition large hail. This is a picture from Prairie Nights Casino three years ago. Five inch diameter hailstone tied the state record. Tied the state record for the largest hailstone in the state of North Dakota that we know of. Back to 1950. The reason we use 1950 for tornadoes and hail and wind is because the National Weather Service says that's when we feel more accurate records started being kept. So we go back to 1950. This tied a five inch hailstone from 1969 or something like that in Mercer County, somewhere around the field. High wind by definition. Now, the interesting thing is um, when I went down there, we did a damage assessment uh, on that uh, hail. And when I went down there, the people, when I said five inches, you've got to tie the state record. They said, well, it was much bigger than that, but we've been having it in and out of the freezer and everybody's been handling it and it's melting. But see, the problem with that is, um, what do you want me to call it then? Do you want me to call it five and an eighth, five and a quarter, five and three eighths? Can't just make up a number. We need you to take a picture before people melt it. <laughs> Before people put it in their soda and, and have to start it uh, The high wind, by definition from a thunderstorm, high wind is 58 miles an hour or higher. 58 miles an hour or higher is by definition high wind. That comes from, <coughs> are you familiar with knots? K-N-O-T-S, nautical miles per hour. You know, a, a boat in the Navy, they don't say we're going uh, uh, 12 miles an hour, they say we're going 10 knots or an airplane. They don't say we're going uh, uh, 50, uh, 58 miles an hour, they say we're going 50 knots. The plane wouldn't be going that slow. But, uh, so what we use is uh, nautical miles per hour or knots. The official equipment we have at the Bismarck Air Force measures wind speed in nautical miles per hour, K-N-O-T-S, knots. 50 knots, 50, is the same as 58 miles an hour. And it's the same thing as are you going uh, are you going 66 miles an hour or are you going 100 kilometers per hour? Yes, it's the same speed. It's just a different way to measure. Same thing here. Why is this important? Why is the definition of large hail and high wind important? Well, because we issue severe thunderstorm warnings. You ever hear about severe thunderstorm warning? The definition of a severe thunderstorm is one that produces either large hail or high wind. So if you hear severe thunderstorm warning, we're saying you're gonna get either hail, one inch in diameter or bigger, or wind, 58 miles an hour or more. You may get both. You could get both. We'll, we'll try and tell you that in the warning. So let's talk about what we do about these events, these products. Watch, a watch product. A watch is issued by the Storm Prediction Center in Norman, Oklahoma. It's not important that you know that. It is part of the National Weather Service. But what they do all day is sit there and look at the lower 48 states, not Alaska and Hawaii, they have their own centers. But they look at the 48 contiguous United States and they say, is there any risk of severe weather, severe thunderstorms, tornadoes, so on, today, tomorrow, the next day? And if there is, they would issue a watch. Watches are issued for large areas, maybe half the state of North Dakota would be in a watch, 
and it's issued for a long time. Thank you for watching. Continued in part three. Videographed by Matthew Krumberger. If you enjoyed the presentation, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel at Matthew Krumberger, Bismarck, North Dakota.